All right, gang, here's a quick tutorial on how to take a comic book style page here and do some uh, panning across it in an interesting and three-dimensional way in After Effects, working with Zach's um, imagery here. I'll start from scratch on a new document. So in Adobe After Effects, uh, we'll create a shot that is the size that we want. In this case, we'll go 1920 by 1080. 23.976 frames per second. That'll cut into any video uh, 24p project that you're working on. So that's a preset that you can do. Um, in fact, you can find that uh, probably down around right about there. And uh, the 23 versus 24, um, not a big deal there for what you're going to be doing. And then uh, indicate how long you want in seconds. So that's hours, minutes, seconds, and frames there. Uh, once you've got that, you can say OK, and you're going to drag in your graphic, which should be high enough resolution to do what we're going to do. Um, so he's got one that's about 3,000 by 4,500 pixels, and uh, we can see that in the frame. That's pretty good. We can zoom in a little bit and punch in on him. So instead of animating the layer, we're going to actually animate a camera, which is going to give us that 3D effect. So to do this, we're going to first tell the software that the plane that we've got is a 3D object in space by clicking this little cube uh, icon here. And now uh, nothing seems to have changed because we haven't added yet a camera. Under layer, we'll find a new camera. You can add that to the scene, and the defaults for this are fine, but you can change the focal length and um, a few other things on there. Just say OK to that. We'll also, um, and this is sort of um, optional if you want it, we'll create a light. And the light will allow us to have kind of a, a little bit of a vignette that's built into the scene, and it looks pretty cool. I like for this the point light, but a parallel light is perfectly straight with no shadows, no fall off, I should say. Uh, a spotlight leaves a perfectly circular, could be soft, could be hard edged, um, round icon on the uh, as the shadow of the light. So I kind of don't like it. The point point light is just like a floating light bulb in space. Uh, we can also change the color of that, the intensity of that, but we'll just go with the default. And you can see that when I did that, that um, the shot sort of changed a little bit. It looks a little bit different. If I change the position of that light, uh, you can see the shadow moving a little bit. If I get it closer to or farther away from the object, um, you can see it changing there too. And eventually, um, it might end up going off camera. So I got to be careful about that. What I'll do to save some time here is actually parent the light to the camera. So now wherever the camera goes, the light goes. But before I do that, I might want to just make sure I've got it set the way I want to. So right there, the light actually went into the paper, if you will. And here it is coming, emerging out of it. The farther back it goes, the more flood-like that light is. If I want to change any settings like the intensity, I can just double click on it and that'll reopen that back off. Uh, this has no fall off. So this is just creating a sort of a penumbra of the light. Now I don't want to push it so far that I overexpose anything. So, All right, so parenting that to the camera. And now we're going to move the camera. One way to do that is to use the uniform cam or unified camera tool. C is a shortcut for that. And once we do that, the left mouse button tumbles. The middle mouse button pans. And the right mouse button zooms in and out. So let's, uh, let's set ourselves up with a situation where um, let's start with a close on the first shot. And I'm seeing that my light's looking a little dim there, so let's crank that up. Say OK. All right, so I've uh, created my first position, but what I need to do now is tell the software that I want to record my subsequent changes. So to do that, we'll twirl down the camera's parameters there. We'll find transform. And the two things that we're changing particularly are the point of interest and the position. So um, what we've done by clicking on this stopwatch is to create a couple of keyframes. Maybe I want this to hold, at which point I don't really want the animation to start here. I want it to have sat there for a second 
and then have the animation begin right here. So what I can do with those keyframes, and indeed any of them, is to pick them up and move them. So what I've said is no animation, and now some animation can begin. Let's say at the two second mark, I'm just kind of arbitrarily saying that. Let's go to that second panel. So I'll zoom out a bit. Maybe what we'll end up with is a, something like that. And now I've got an animation that goes between A and B. And that's not bad. Maybe we can do a little um, straightening that up. And I'm going to intentionally get some white space in there. <clears throat> something like that. Okay, so there's an A to B. And it's moving very mechanically. There's an A and there's B. So one way to avoid that is um, make those moves faster. So now it seems a little bit more inten intentional. And then the other is to take these keyframes, and if we right-click on it, there's something called Keyframe Assistant. And there's a number of things here we can ease out of that. So as in physics, most things don't start moving um, at full speed. We have to ease into that speed. So if we hit easy ease in, we'll see that now it ramps up and comes to a hard stop. If we wanted to come to a soft stop, we could ease in to that keyframe too. And here we go, ease in, right? Um, technically we would be easing out of this keyframe. Let's try that. Okay, so then you get kind of a swish pan effect. If we want to make that seem even swishier, there's a little thing right here that enables motion blur for all layers. Right now, the layer does not have motion blur set on, so we need to turn it on for that layer. That's this guy, and we switch it on. And now, in the middle of that move, we can see it goes temporarily out of focus. Now, we're adding the keyframes to the camera. Anytime you want to see those keyframes and if they've gone hidden you can hit the letter U and that'll show those. So let's say it holds there for a moment and we want to create a new keyframe. Just click on the little diamond guy right there that creates a new keyframe saying that we're basically staying from position B to position B over here and now let's go for that third position which is going to be a dramatic angle on this eyeball shot here. And then my light position is kind of keeping me from doing exactly what I want there. But All right. So we need some eases there. Let's ease out of that. And let's ease into that. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's have a hard, hard stop there so you can see the difference. So here's um, ease, ease, ease hard. So it just looks a little bit different. Um, let's copy those keyframes and paste them. That's another thing we can do. Just copying it to the clipboard, and we'll go to our fourth pose, which is uh, be over here somewhere. This is a wide. Get everything in it. Okay, so again, we'll hit those keyframe. He's out, and uh, let's check the timing on it overall. Whip, whip, whip. It's pretty mechanical. If we want to have something hold for a little bit longer, we can change the position of these keyframes. So uh, maybe this is a short shot like this. That holds for a bit. We go out to that. So if you like what you've got, you can head on up to Composition. Go to either Add to Render Queue or Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. So adding to the render queue makes us uh, pop over to the queue where we can uh, name it and say where it's going. So this will be shot one, for example. And we'll pick uh, a form a format here. So we've got QuickTime as one um, in which we can then change the codec. That starts to get a little tricky. So if that seems a little much to you, Try Adobe Media Encoder queue. What that's going to do is open a new application. It'll take a second. It's essentially going to link to it automatically. And uh, there's Media Encoder opening. It's going to link to this project and allow us to check, um, choose between a couple of different presets that might be more useful to us or make more sense to us. So if we're doing um, an edit with some footage that was shot on a digital camera, like a DSLR or something, we can pick another kind of, say, H.264 or MPEG encoded video file format that will allow us to plug that into the edit with the rest of it. And uh, for that, I would just go to these presets here. 
So you can say uh, match source high bitrate, and this is an H.264. You might not have that as your default, but there's QuickTime. It's usually the default. Lots of different other things here, including image sequences, but matching source, that's going to be the highest possible quality. Or you might uh, pick one of these kind of exports for um, kind of final media like that. But for us, I think uh, the high bitrate matching source H.264 is going to be our best. And here's where we tell it where to go. So we'll call that shot one. And we'll send it back to our file there. And we we'll hit the little triangular button there, which is actually the return or render me now button. What it's doing is connecting to that project file, rendering that project file. And uh, we'll get some results here in just a second.